Now, a lot of people may not understand what this is, but this is way back in 2007 when people were walking down the streets in New York City and they were getting messages but couldn't figure out where it was from. Well, it turns out the A&E channel had a show called Paranormal State, and it's the first time they rolled out voice-to-skull technology without people even understanding what it was. People were walking down the street and they were getting voice to skull messages from a billboard mounted way up here on a building, 2007, 11 years ago. This stuff is no joke. I get, I don't even know how many emails, comments, and messages from people that say that they are targeted individuals. And most people that don't understand what this is or don't get it whatsoever at all, just laugh them off. Well, it's a serious thing, and apparently it has gone mainstream. Let me give you a little background on what voice to skull technology is. Let's go over to Alpha Mind Control for a couple of minutes. Do you believe that a technology exists wherein speech can be encoded and transmitted via microwaves so that it can be heard inside the human skull without the use of a receiver? Came totally immersed in hearing voices. <laughs> Are you delusional? You could actually hear voices in your head uh, from microwave being the carrier band heating up the temporal lobes. Whenever I hear somebody talking to me about microwaves or stuff like that being zoomed into their head. You are not supposed to be violating people at the level that this is. I think even voice to skull technology should be outlawed. Now this is one of those things that people will simply laugh, laugh at. Because if they haven't experienced it as of yet to them, it's like so many th other things. It isn't real. Look at this article from Wired Magazine. This goes all the way back. Once again, what is this, 10 years ago? The Army Yanks Voice to Skull De Devices site. They had a website up, and they were showing that they could do voice to skull technology since 1974. They would beam this using microwaves and other extremely low frequencies at a human, and the bone structure of a human being would act as an antenna. A UK group, Christians Against Mental Slavery, first noted, and they applied the pressure, getting the military to pull this website, but they saved a screenshot from it. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, why am I talking about this now? Well, because people need to be reminded all the time that this stuff hasn't gone away. It's actually gone mainstream. They're pushing technology, and people love technology. This is a common sight. People love this stuff. This is an everyday occurrence. This is where we are right now. People think that staying up on the latest technology is a good thing. It puts them ahead of the curve. This type of technology right here, where it's literally telling you it's using your bone structure to run the frequency through your body so you can hear it in your ears, is incredibly dangerous. Absolutely dangerous, and there's no reason for it, and yet it continues to push forward. I saw a post on Instagram this morning where somebody was talking about how they could get one of these hats and they were on sale, and that's what got me going. Listen to this. In the 1980s, a firestorm of court cases concerning the satanic and ritual abuse of children swept across the United States and was fueled by the popular media. The stories dump in the ocean, chop up the bodies, these things, they sound like they can't be happening. Ted Gunnison, respected law enforcement professional, recently or retired now from the FBI, former regional director of Los Angeles. Do you, sir, believe that these dreadful allegations of babies being sacrificed are true. I absolutely believe it, without any doubt. San Diego, California resident Dale Kiki, born with a rare genetic disorder known as Noonan syndrome, was accused of ritually abusing children. Did you ever intentionally, physically hurt any children? No, I did not. Have you ever tortured any children? No. Have you ever hurt or tortured or killed any animals? No. The satanic ritual abuse allegations, which were so widely sensationalized in the popular media, 
were eventually labeled a moral panic by most professional and law enforcement entities. And in 1995, even Geraldo Rivera issued an apology for his participation in popularizing the satanic abuse phenomenon. Due to the fact that I had witnessed somewhat of a cover-up of the reality of ritual abuse in my local community due to the maneuvers of reporter Mark Sauer. The evidence is uh, thin at best, specious, and, uh, and uh, frankly does not stand up to the light of day. One of the first things I did was to immediately peruse the news group Alt-Satanism, for instance. And I found a very famous alleged perpetrator on one of these news groups by the name of Lieutenant Colonel Michael Aquino. And I had appellate documents, um, and the appellate documents about his case basically said that he was processed out of the Army in 1990 after a ritual abuse child investigation. He's an admitted Satanist. He runs this, you know, goofy, you know, dark church or whatever, however you want to characterize it. So there's, a, there's enough smoke here that Diana's going to find fire. Is it a force for everything negative? Well... If you're talking about Satanism as legitimate Satanists define it, absolutely not. Does that prove that he's a child abuser, that he's sexually molesting children, or as agents, you know, operating that? Well, of course not. I mean, where's the evidence of that? Well, the evidence is actually everywhere. The fact that this guy was even holding the rank that he did in the military is absolutely unbelievable. But when you're doing psychological warfare... You probably need somebody that's a Satanist. And it was never a secret whatsoever at all. I mean, going from his wacky eyebrows to all the allegations made against him. This guy belonged to the Church of Satan in 1969 and stayed with it until 1975 and then left to start his Temple of Set, an even more hardcore version of the Satanic Temple. Now, people think that stuff's crazy. That doesn't exist. Well, really? I covered this two years ago, and it's still standing right now. And I'm going to show it to you again because people need to be reminded. When this first came out, lots of people were covering it, but it all goes down the memory hole. I made a video yesterday talking about the sentient world simulation. They figured out how they can keep people that become outraged about a topic like this, for instance, Satan in school, Satanic temples being opened in the middle of towns. This is me inside the Satanic temples headquarters. No videos, no pictures, and yet I did it anyways. It's kind of strange that after that I found myself having, you know, in the middle of the night harassment, but I digress. This stuff is real. This stuff is burgeoning to steal a quote from L.A. Marzulli, but is this art? Is this art? A Baphomet with golden wings, a raging erection, as above, so below. I mean, these people are everywhere. They're in positions of power. This is old news. But I'm going to leave links in all of this in the description. But listen to this. Lieutenant Colonel Aquino was accused of ritual child abuse while he was stationed at the Presidio Army Base in San Francisco, but he was eventually cleared of all charges. I could not function at work, this new job that I had, and so I didn't pass probation at this new job, and I was let go. And I became totally immersed in hearing voices. These people identified themselves as NASA Ames employees. They identified themselves as Livermore Lab. Paranoia is a defense mechanism to de handle with anger. Most people don't like to be angry, and particularly many people like to deny the fact that they are angry. So instead of admitting to themselves or anybody else that they are angry, they devise a system where they project their anger on other people. And I discovered various victims' websites, people who had the same symptoms that I had, and they were referring to what was called voice-to-skull technology. Now, I can already hear the naysayers calling people crazy, but I have gotten so much communication from people that are experiencing this stuff in real time, in real life, and now they're pushing it as mainstream technology. So for all of you guys that are dealing with this, I'm going to leave links to absolutely everything I can find in the description below. And for those of you that have made it this far, I'm going to be breaking the new website out on Patreon first and then on the regular website tomorrow.
Now beware, because trolls are going to find their way in there one way or another. You guys are going to have to let me know so I can get rid of them. At any rate, back to this. And they referred to this website. And the website was called the Center for Army Lessons Learned. And I looked it up, and this website is run by the Army. Usually these delusional systems become more and more elaborate. I looked up a term that other victims had been talking about, which was voice to skull devices. They go out and explain to it, it all becomes part of the delusional system. What voice to skull devices say, I have the printout right here, as it says, it's a non-lethal weapon, which includes neural electromagnetic device, which uses microwave transmission of sound into the skull of persons or animals by way of pulse-modulated microwave radiation. I think it's, it's fair and it's important to say, you know, this does not sound to me like something that uh, I find myself able to believe. There have been recent advances in acoustic technology which can transmit sound great distances with a very narrow target range. The long-range acoustic device is one such technology and is currently employed by both military and commercial sea vessels to deter potential attackers. In San Diego, California, Woody Norris, developer of the LRAD, describes another of his acoustic technologies known as hypersonic sound. It's kind of like uh, radio stations, except in this case, you don't need a receiver. To hear a radio station, I gotta have a receiver. With this, the mixing actually happens in the air, and you hear it without any other device. Now, the reason I'm showing you this video that's fairly old is because it's insane to look at this when they're talking about things that people considered conspiratorial, things that were just made up out of thin air. And then we look at the news, 2014, in Ferguson. Remember this? All the technology they were talking about has now made its way onto the American streets. They are normalizing this. They want people to go for this. No two ways about it. And they are. And they absolutely are. Beware. Be prepared. Use the information that's available while it still is available because things are changing. Richie from Boston. Links are in the description. I'm out.